Hello all, I am Anand, I am one of the TF for this course. Today I am going to demonstrate about uh, the double pipe heat exchanger, we can call it as a parallel and counter flow heat exchanger also. Heat exchanger is a device in which the heat is transferred from one fluid to the other. Uh, there are many common applications uh, even in uh, daily life and uh, industries also. Uh, if you see at your uh, refrigerator backside, you can find a heat exchanger and a car, radi car radiator is one of the heat exchanger. Uh, to generate the steam uh, in the power plants, uh, there also it is a common application. Uh, there are uh, three kinds of heat exchangers. One is a transfer type, uh, direct contact type and a storage type. And uh, here we are going to deal about uh, uh, deal on uh, uh, the transfer type. Uh, uh, in the transfer type, uh, there are uh, uh, the common example of the transfer type is a double pipe heat exchanger. In this, uh, uh, there are two concentric tubes, uh, long tubes, and uh, in the inside tube, uh, the hot water passes, and uh, in the the gap between the inside pipe and the outside pipe, which is called as the annulus, uh, uh, the cold water uh, passes and the heat is transferred from the hot water to the cold water. There are two modes in the in this kind of heat exchanger. Uh, one is parallel and counter flow. Uh, if the both the fluids uh, passes through the same direction, in the same direction, uh, it is called parallel flow heat exchanger. If they travels in the opposite direction, then it is a counter flow heat exchanger. Yeah, when coming to the experimental setup, uh, this is the control panel. Uh, these are the rotameters. And, uh, and these are the RTDs, means uh, resistance, uh, resistance temperature detectors. Uh, these are the walls uh, to accommodate uh, different modes of uh, uh, operation like parallel mode and uh, counter flow. Uh, these are the rotameters. And this is a, a bypass wall uh, to control the flow rate of hot water. When, uh, yeah, in this setup, there are two loops. One is hot water loop and another one is cold water loop. Uh, the hot water loop is a closed loop. So, whatever the water which is pumped, it will return to the uh, the original reservoir, thermal reservoir. So, the hot water loop starts at uh, the hot water bath. This is the hot water bath. You can call it as a thermal reservoir. So, it is, uh, uh, it heats up the water to the required temperature using two immersion heaters. These are the two immersion heaters. Anyway, it, they are, uh, you might have already known the immersion heaters that you have used for uh, in your houses. Mm, and those two heaters are powered up using these two knobs. If you switch on the heaters, uh, will works. And uh, and the second thing is this uh, hot water is pumped into the heat exchanger through the pump. This is the pump. This is the pump. And that pump is powered up using this knob, this switch. Uh, and uh, the temperature in the hot reservoir uh, is being controlled using the PID controller. This is the PID controller. Uh, and uh, the temperatures at the inlet and outlet of each fluid, like hot water and cold fluid, uh, is uh, can be measured, use, can be seen through this uh, temperature indicator. This is the temperature indicator. And this whole setup is powered up using this main switch. So now it has powered up. And uh, the flow rate of hot water and the cold water can be like a, ident like a measured using uh, these rotameters uh, and the units for this LPH liters per hour and uh, it has a bob which rises with the uh, flow rate. This is the switch for the pump. Now I have switched on the pump, and this is the bypass wall. Since uh, we cannot restrict the flow of pump, uh, otherwise it may damage. So a bypass valve is introduced. Actually, here uh, there is a T bend, so water is entering in this direction, and uh, this is a uh, this is the valve which allows the water directly back to the reservoir. At the same time. Uh, this wall will allow the water into the setup, means the heat exchanger. Uh, so, we have to control these two walls in order to 
uh, get the proper range of uh, flow uh, of hot water. This rotameter is used to measure uh, the uh, hot water flow rate and this is for cold water flow rate. And uh, the cold water flow rate uh, can be controlled using the volume V1. This is the volume V1, uh, back side it is there, I will show. Uh, this is the valve uh, for the control of the f uh, cold water flow rate and, uh, and this has to be adjusted to the required flow rate while monitoring uh, the rotometer. So both we have to look here and uh, like this we need to adjust uh, the proper flow rate. Yeah, when coming to the cold side uh, loop, uh, it is an open loop. So whatever the water uh, is entered into the system uh, leaves. Uh, this is the actual heat exchanger. Uh, in this, uh, there are two concentric tubes. Uh, it was completely insulated from the outside. Uh, so, the hot water is entering in this direction. If we allow these, uh, uh, if we arrange these walls in such a way that if the cold water, this is the cold water entry, if it goes in this direction and hot water also going in this direction, then it is parallel mode. And uh, if, uh, if I close this side and if I open this side, and uh, if the water enters in this side, then it will be a counter flow direction. So, uh, this is the wall arrangement. So, clearly in a simple way, if V4 and V5 are open and other walls are closed, then it is parallel mode and vice versa. Like if uh, V4 and V5 are closed and others are open, then it is a counter flow mode. So, coming to the experiments, first of all, we need to uh, fix one particular temperature to the hot bath. So, that uh, that can be done using this PID controller. So, I have set the temperature to 70 degrees. Uh, eventually, with time, uh, the temperature will increase us up to 70 degrees. Uh, these are the switches. For a fixed uh, cold water flow rate, that is 150 LPH, uh, change uh, the hot water flow rates like 100 LPH, 150 LPH, and 200 LPH. At the three levels of hot water flow rate, for a fixed uh, cold water flow rate and for a fixed uh, hot bath temperature. Here I have fixed the temperature to 70 degrees. Uh, it is just simply we have to press this button. That is it, uh, the level of the, the water temperature level will increase. Similarly, if you want to reduce that, uh, you have to press this button. So, uh, this is a PID controller. So, for the fixed temperature, fixed cold flow water flow rate and the different levels of hot water flow rate measure the LMTD, measure the uh, heat transfer coefficient using the temperatures. We need to measure four temperatures, uh, the T1, T2, T3 and T4. Uh, for T1, e T1 and T2 are the inlet temperatures and outlet temperatures of the cold water which is being measured uh, with the uh, RTDs. And uh, this is how, this, uh, this is showing, this temperature indicator is showing the T1 which is nothing but inlet temperature of the hot water uh, since it was not at uh, heated, uh, it is showing 33. But if it is heated, it will show around uh, the 70 degrees. And uh, T2, uh, just we have to press this knob to, to, ch to know the temperatures of other areas like outlet temperature. This is uh, uh, T2, gently press this button. We'll go to, this uh, indicator will show the temperature T2 which is nothing but outlet temperature of the hot water. Similarly, T3. T3 is inlet, uh, inlet temperature of the cold water and uh, T4 is the outlet temperature of the cold water. T4 is outlet temperature in the parallel mode and uh, T4, uh, T5 is the outlet temperature in the counter mode. So, like this we have to measure the temperatures. So, after reaching the steady state, so it, it, at least for the first reading it may take around 45 minutes. So, after reaching the steady state, we have to measure the temperatures. Uh, for the inlet outlet of the hot water and uh, inlet outlet of the cold water. Uh, those are T1, T2 and T3, T4. So, uh, at least uh, we have to estimate the steady state uh, like in such a way that uh, with eventually with time the temperature should not change. So, uh, when it is not changing, uh, so the whole system is steady with the whole environment around it. Uh, so, uh, so, wait until the steady state has reached and then take the readings of T1, T2, T3, T4 using this norm. After that, um, calculate LMTD using the formulas uh, that was already described in the manual for LMTD and the heat transfer coefficient, overall heat transfer coefficient and drop the graphs for uh, LMTD versus M dot uh, of the hot fluid and uh, similarly 
overall heat transfer coefficient versus uh, amount of hot fluid and compare uh, and compare overall heat transfer coefficients for uh, both parallel and counter flow modes so then we can evaluate which mode is better for the uh, better heat transfer uh, yeah so with this hopefully you understand uh, uh, the whole working thank you very much